Um, so this is the standard Magento, uh, the new uh, Magento template. Uh, it's called the Luma template. And it is responsive. Let's see if this is going to work for me here. Uh, ba -ba -ba. I'm supposed to make this go down into smaller amounts. And then... So you can see that it scales down. Everything pushes over. Um, and it all fits uh, for a, in a responsive uh, way. And it adapts to the products. As you can see, they, they go vertical. They combine out. They shift over. Um, et cetera, et cetera. It's not, I mean, this is, this is, I think, miles better than the old, what was it, Madison Island template that they used to have. Um, it was really good. Uh, but I think this is, this is even better. The, um, uh, it's a good starting point, basically. Um, if you're just learning uh, Magento 2 theming and how it goes and stuff like that, this is a good place to uh, just to, uh, install it, take a look at it, uh, and how they do it. Um, I'm not going to really get into too much. They've got things like video download. Uh, what I, no, I know what I wanted to do. I wanted to get into checkout. So let me, because they've got the new checkout, because the old checkout was um, so, uh, you know, you always had those extra steps. You know, are you a customer? Are you a guest? Are you going to register? Do you want to log in? It's like all these pre-checkout things and stuff like that. And it wasn't really great. So now they've, they've, they've changed it, and I think they've made it a hell of a lot better. That the, uh, I think, I don't think it's called a one-step checkout. It's more, it's more like a two-step checkout. What? Oh, because I haven't selected it, but it's the only color. Oh, well. That's been noted. <laughs> all right, so it's in my basket. I'm going to go to my basket and go to checkout. Um, and I'm just going to point out a few of the things that I like, that, uh, that I noticed about the checkout that I think is, is really good. Um, that they've got, first off, you've got the order summary in the screen right there with a picture with an image right there. And so you've got all the details, but it doesn't, it doesn't, uh, it's only if you want to see it, right? So the customers who want to see what they want to see in there, they can see it. And if not, um, then it just rolls back up, which I thought was a really nice touch. Um, it asks for your email address first. Great for uh, for uh, abandoned cart uh, recovery because it asks for the email address first. And one of the things I really like, let's see if this is going to work. Uh, uh, this is what I used for my last demo. No, they must have wiped it clean. So if, it, if you put it in an email address and it recognizes that you already have an account, the next thing it'll do is it'll refresh and it'll show you a password and say, do you want to log in? You don't have to, you can still continue as a guest, but it'll offer that. I think it's brilliant. Um, you got the first name, last name, company, you know, the address. Um, and also they've got the, you know, they've got the, the, the shipping methods, which don't, I think they showed by default, but as soon as you choose, um, uh, as soon as you choose a place, a location, then I think it, it zones down uh, into it. Uh, where if I change to the country, I think that'll do it. Or maybe not. I forgot which field it was that did that. Oh, let's try and ship it to Uruguay. They must have refreshed the database. We had it so that the shipping methods would change based on um, it was it was a much smoother change based on what you uh, what you had for the country, and I was changing it between the United States and the United Kingdom, and we had set the the table rate. I think it didn't show up for one and not the other, but apparently they've refreshed it. So apologies for my uh, my half baked uh, demo here. Kind of figured this might happen. One, two, three, four, five, and then. Yeah, it's required. And then again, it doesn't ask for your uh, it doesn't it doesn't ask for a shipping address or a billing address until you get to this point. Uh, I, I mean, if you want another one up to here, and then of course you've got the discount code and the gift card, and again it gives you a nice summary on the side. And also it is if I can narrow this down. Oh wait, no, I'm still on that mode. If you narrow it down, this is also responsive as well, where it'll collapse down. So it's again, it's a nice, uh, simple checkout, very easy for you guys to, to customize and build upon. I think it's a, it's a really good starting point, much better than it was before. So it's not one-step checkout, it's two-step checkout, but it's still pretty good. Um, so next, I'm going to switch over to the admin, which you probably have seen, A-D-M-I-N. Uh, so um, first thing you notice the admin is it's uh, they made it more touch friendly 
for tablets, for basically a lot of people walking through an inventory thing and clicking, clicking, clicking. There are no more, uh, there are no more hover states. You click something, it opens up on the side and it stays there and then you can click it again. So that's really, it's, that's great touch. So it's screen optimized. Um, cleaner interface, they moved some things, but I think they made it much more organized. Um, especially things like reports um, is much more organized. Uh, stores where they put things here, attributes, settings, taxes, currency, other settings. They put them all in one place. Marketing, communications, the SEO and search promotions. So they really grouped it together. They renamed some of them so they're not the same names, but they actually make more sense now. So it's, um, uh, it's, it's, it makes much more sense. Products, and actually not just products, but um, you got the custom panel, admin panel views. So this is in uh, product, customer, and order grids. So filtering now, when you go in here and you need to do the filtering, it's a lot easier. You click, rather than do it, they used to have it in the header here, um, and it was all mushed up together, and it was all, it was kind of a pain. Now you open this up, it's really nice and big. You can choose, let me see, quantity from you know, zero to 100. You apply the filter. And then I guess, okay, everything here, yeah, 100 and up. So you've got those products, 103 of them. And here's what I really like about it. You can save that view so you don't have to enter it. So 100 quantity. And now if I come back here, I don't have to enter the thing again. And that's really great, especially for more complicated ones. So if you want to have a one that says, show me everything where the stock quantity is zero, it'll show it. Or stock quantity is zero, and I want to just see the watches. You can save it. And it's really easy to do. Um, you can also do the same thing with dragging and dropping and moving the grid around. So if you, there are attributes that you want to put to the left, oh, I want my status right there. You can do that. You also have a lot more control over the columns that you can show or hide. And again, all of this is savable as a view. So that's really nice. Um, Oh yeah, so and if you're editing a product, they've, they've really cleaned it up. So rather than having 10 different, uh, 10 or however many things you had on the left, you used to have a ton of different things where all of the, uh, uh, all of the product attributes were, and you just click, 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 trying to find it. Uh, you submit it, there's an error, which tab is it on? There's two or three tabs you have to look for. This, they cleaned it all up and they put it all on, almost everything on one page, all the main things that you typically need to do, all on this main one here. It's much easier to, to um, you can also change the attribute set, which I don't think you used to be able to do. So if I wanted to change this from being a bag to a, to gear, you can do that. I don't think you used to be able to do that. No. But one of the things that I think you can do that, that, and you, these also roll up as well, which is really cool. One of the things I also didn't know is so you can add an attribute. So if you would say, oh, you know what, this, this, this bag needs to have an attribute of, you know, I don't know, material or something like that. And it wasn't there before. You can add it here. Uh, or you can, you can search for it, for one thing, or if it's not there, you can create a new attribute right from within the product. Now, I actually think that it was in Magento 1. I have no idea when they slipped it in, but I saw it on a Magento 1 install, maybe in one of the later versions, but it's like, but it's like kind of hidden. Here, it's at least, now you actually see it. And you also have a really clear indication right here. Is this product online, yes or no? And it's right there, it'll tell you. Um, and then, of course, you've got the advanced settings that you've got here. Um, Advanced pricing. There used to be another advanced pricing thing, but I think they took that out in the final release of Magento 2 for, for the pricing. I think it was... Uh, yeah, I think it was, it was custom pricing. Uh, anyway, uh, not there anymore. What was it? Yeah, customer pricing, wasn't it? Like uh, tiered pricing? Or is tiered pricing is still in there? Tiered pricing is there. I thought there was another different pricing. Anyway. Anyway, uh, what was I going to say about this? Uh, images, you got, oh yeah, I was going to say, uh, if you notice the uh, addition of add video, that's new, built in. Um, change the attribute set, images, uh, and changing the categories as well. You can change the categories um, on the same page now. So that is a lot uh, easier to do. Um, is that all I wanted to say? Oh, oh um, that's it, the WYSIWYG. The WYSIWYG is now built in as well. So you can do the WYSIWYG right here um, where you used to have to go to a separate screen. So again, they cleaned it up. Um, they made it a lot fewer, fewer steps to have to deal with, so it's a lot nicer. Um, next one is if you go to stores, uh, stores attributes. Is it attributes or attribute set? Uh, product 
uh, product. There you go. The product attributes. They now have, which one is it? Uh, looking for color. Not color, color. Visual swatch. It's a new one that they didn't have before. So it's built in now. It's a lot easier to do and create um, swatches. Um, so they've got that built in. You can see the images there. Then all you have to do is reference the color and those swatches will show up, those color swatches. I think they also have text swatch, which I don't I think is also a new one. I don't think they had that one before as a default one. They also have what I noticed, which I didn't used to notice before, is returns, um, where you can do a returns request. So it used to be you just had to, you, I remember you just be able to do um, issuing credit memos. That was like pretty much the only thing you could do. But now you can, you can create these return requests. I don't remember this being a Magento one, correct me if I'm wrong. Um, but you can say, uh, I want to do a return. So uh, uh, yeah, okay, new return request. And you say, what order? Okay, well, uh, it's this order. I want to return a product from this order. And it's going to say, what items do you want to ret return? Uh, add product. Okay, so this is what they ordered. So this is the product that they want to return. Add that to the return. And then you can say, well, uh, how many of them are they returning? One, what's the return reason? Out of service, wrong color, wrong size. You can customize that list. Um, the item condition, was it opened, unopened? You can customize that list. What's the resolution? A refund or store credit. That's a new one. Um, so, and then, and then the action. So, and then you can submit the return. And I believe, which I, I didn't, uh, if I go back and went through a longer process, I believe the, the customer themselves can request a return. Uh, so it will, it will come in and it can generate like a return authorization thing and you can send it back to them and you can approve it or not approve it and then it sends it back to them. It might be configurable. I think it was in Magento 1. But you, you know, basically the admin can set up the workflow where the customer can initiate it yeah. or the admin. If not, I, it, it was a lot more evident for me in Magento 2 when I saw that, that it was a lot easier to do and to find um, where I didn't find that before. Um, same thing with customer segmentation. I think they've made improvements on the, how the, uh, the customer segmentation, the amount, um, I think you can get more granular on segmentation than you used to be able to. I'm just going to do a test here on this. So save and continue edit. Oh, it's a required field. Conditions. So I don't remember them having the, the complex conditions on on uh, on customer where you can choose um, give me all customers who were who were you know created at so all the customers in the new in the in the in the last month or all customers who are older than such by by doing it by date of birth or any of this um, how many orders they've ordered um, uh, which state they're from um, the sales amount my high value customers I don't remember Magento one having this granularity um, I know it's there for things like uh, 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 for setting up uh, uh, shopping cart price rules and stuff like that, but I don't think I ever saw it for um, customer segmentation. So that is, uh, and you, then you can also run reports in, uh, on these. So you can either run reports on them, you can also create shopping price, shopping cart, shopping cart price rules and things like that based on this. So if a customer is in one of these groups that matches it, your high value customers give them a discount, stuff like that. So I think there's a lot more flexibility in that. And the last is just the reporting and analytics. Just wanted to show um, I believe there are, oh, I think all of the old reports are there. I think there's some six new ones. Um, there's three for private sales. I don't remember the private sales one being there before. Invitations, invited customers, and conversions on your private sales. Um, wish list report. Um, so you can see what customers have products in their, in their wish list, and you can also see what products are in customers' wish list. So you can kind of see it both ways. You can say, what are my products that are most wished for? You can say, which customers wish for products the most? And last one is customer segments. Again, the, the, the advanced customer segments. I don't think there was that report before where you can uh, do a report on those advanced cu customer segments. So the one that I just created, if I go to it, uh, segments. I don't think this report existed before um, when I did a comparison from, I think it was, I was on, yeah, I'm pretty sure I was on the last version of, of uh, Magento 1 when I compared it with this, and, uh, and this wasn't there. So this is the report that I just did, and if I run it, of course, it's going to tell me that there's, oh, there's somebody there, because it matched. Well, there you go. Um, that is a really, really lightning uh, go through of, of the changes that I've noticed 
um, that I've seen between Magento 1 and Magento 2. What I'd really like to do is get an advanced uh, uh, one of Magento 2 Community versus Enterprise and get a real clear vision of that. And I think that would be really interesting to do. Um, to wrap up, though, thank you guys for all for coming. Thank you to Klarna, Space48, and also, if anyone here, we also have um, JetBrains has given us two free licenses to PHP Storm. So if anybody wants to be in the raffle for that, come see me afterwards, put your name, I'll draw two names out of a hat, and we'll do that. Same thing online if you're interested. Uh, yeah, online. Um, if you're interested, um, just put it in the, uh, in the tweet, just tweet it to, uh, to Mage LDN, and I'll put the names out of a hat, and I'll draw them out, and then I'll send you uh, that. So thank you to JetBrains for offering those free uh, license raffles. And last one is, um, I'm looking for talks on Magento 2 for the future. Things like, especially in particular, building a new Magento 2 website, an experience report, what that was like, the problems you had deploying, if you ever solve that, or you find a way, however you do it, things like that. And migrating from Magento 1 to Magento 2. Um, how did the migration process work? How did their tools work? What did work? What didn't work? Um, I think those two would be very interesting topics. And a third one would be theming in Magento 2. I haven't seen many talks about theming in Magento 2. Maybe it's not that much different. Maybe it's very different. I think those would be uh, really good talks. And the next talk that I'm trying to line up is uh, security on Magento 2. How they're going to be addressing how they tested Magento 2. Um, the, how they're going to deal with the security patches. Because I know that in Magento 1, towards the end, there was a lot of issues with uh, security patches and things like that. So um, I, I want to get to, uh, is it Peter? Yeah, Peter. Peter. Um, so I'm speaking with him about him uh, uh, doing a webcast yeah. where he'll webcast in, he's not going to fly to, well, unless they want to pay for him to fly to London. He, no. he <laughs> uh, he'll webcast in and we can, a again, and we can ask him questions, but we'll have him remote, but we'll have him here uh, to be virtually here to be able to talk about security in Magento 2. So... That's uh, basically it. Uh, thanks again to Space48, Klarna, JetBrains, uh, Vanai, and Ben. Thanks again. <laughs>